Okay, for lesson one, we are going to start a couple of slides before it says lesson one, because I wanted to include this in our introduction. So first we want to talk about how we use statistics. Usually it starts with a question that you want to answer. So in response to that, you collect data. So this is done through experimenting, uh, surveys, sampling. Trust me, it's an election year. There has been a lot of data collection. And then once people have collected that data, you want to explore it. So you want to make plots of it, graphs. You want to have summary statistics. So depending on what you have, you might want to look at proportions. You might want to look at means or medians. And then based on what you see in the data, you might want to make an inference to the population. So based on this sample from whatever population you want to make a statement about, uh, what you saw in your data can bring you to this conclusion about the population. And we're going to go into estimation and hypothesis testing. That's a you know, few weeks down the road there, but uh, so we can answer questions about the population. Oops. So who uses it? In short, I mean, I don't want to say everybody does, but um, statistics is everywhere. So ecology is one place, so you might want to describe quantitatively how certain animal and plant populations are spatially distributed. That can be tricky. I had a, a friend that was doing an analysis on snow leopards, and snow leopards don't really want to be found. So uh, they had to figure out a way to try to more accurately estimate how many leopards were there. Marketing. I can't stress enough how huge stats is in marketing. Um, our data is being constantly sold. Uh, there's so much data on each individual person out there. It's overwhelming. You wonder about why you had a certain Google search and now you're getting certain types of ads, that kind of thing. Um, marketing uses stats a lot. Uh, public health. Absolutely, this is a big one. Anytime there's a new medical treatment, anything like that, uh, people are trying to get a COVID vaccine, there are statistical like tests like you have to determine that it's effective to a point and that's not harmful to a point and whatnot. Uh, anytime you want to push a generic through, you have to demonstrate the generic is at least as good or roughly as good as the original uh, name brand, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, public policy. And this one's actually a lot bigger than it probably just reads. Uh, you want to probably identify folks in the uh, in the population. The census is out right now. I know they've missed me at my door a couple of times now. I have to call them back. But uh, getting a, a good sense of who is in a group really dictates where money goes. It, it dictates what policies are made and those policies dictate where, where money goes uh, and, and, and government spending and things like that. It's, it's huge. So the field of stats is, I think, a social justice issue. It's important and relevant to everyone, regardless of whether or not you intend to do research yourself. Quite simply, we're all consumers. We're bombarded. Anywhere you look, any social media you go on, we are being just bombarded by statistics. I, I read the other day, like 71% uh, uh, of this one group did this or that. And you need to be able, and what's really important, is to not simply parrot statistical studies that you hear about casually. It's really important to be able to consider them critically. Where did these data come from? How, how was it collected? How was the study designed? How was it delivered? Who was it delivered by? Uh, who paid for it? That's a really big one. Who paid for the research? Super big. And then, then you get down to, well, how do these factors affect the reported findings? Uh, for example, there was an article out a few years ago. It was really big. Um, people were upset that stated that bacon causes cancer. And there are issues with it, major issues. Uh, it, it really came down to, you can say that bacon consumption was related or associated with increased cancer uh, risk, but 
you could not say that one of them caused the other uh, based on their study design. So we live in a world where there's just so much data out there. So not only do we have to worry about being a consumer, we have to consider how are our own data being used. I know um, I've, I've accessed sometimes uh, OSU collects demographic data on all of its students and it has uh, them printed out. Um, they have like by, by college, I don't think by major, but definitely um, all the demographic like racial, ethnic groups that they have on their applications, they store that, they keep that. Um, it's really interesting. They have years of data at that, that link. So stats is relevant to all of us. So even if you don't intend to use it, you need to make sure it doesn't use you. So lesson one, what is statistics? So we're going to define statistics as a field. So the definition of statistics is the science of collecting, organizing, and interpreting data. So you start with a question, you collect data, you organize it, um, and then you interpret uh, what you have there. So there are going to be some first steps once you have decided what the question is. You need to figure out what kind of data you have, and we're going to talk about them, and figure out where it comes from. So we're going to define an individual case. So what is the, the smallest unit that you, you collect information from? So it's an object described by data. If you're doing a survey, your individual or case is usually a person. Sometimes you might call them a subject. It could be an animal, it could be a household, it's whatever smallest unit that you collect information on. And so once you have your individuals, what you collect on them, the information you collect on them are variables. So it's a characteristic that you observe on an individual that can change between individuals, so from person to person. So. I might have a survey of OSU students and I might ask them what their eye color is. And so the variable would be eye color and each individual student taking the survey would be an individual or case. And then where we're going to look at here with variable, um, there are two common types of variables that we can have. So the first is categorical variable. Uh, it places individuals into one of several groups or categories. It could be, for example, if you've looked at the syllabus quiz, do you prefer hot weather or cold weather? It's either or. They can, per, they can pick hot weather, they can pick cold weather. They're, they're categories. You could ask folks, um, let me see, what political party are you registered with? And there are a whole lot of categories, right? You can have the two big ones, independent, all those other ones. You could have the two big ones, everything else. It totally depends on how you group it. The other common type of variable we like to use, it is quantitative. So a variable that's observed as a number. These kind of um, variables make sense to take an average of. So suppose I rounded folks up and I collected their height. I'm not sure how. Most people won't tolerate that, but uh, that would be a quantitative variable, their height. So here we have a few examples. Definitely encourage you to press pause here. Um, welcome to give it a try before I reveal answers. We want to identify if each of these variables is categorical or quantitative. I believe that I have a, a fourth one on the notes that I gave you, and I'll, I'll put it in there. So the time it takes to finish a race. So this can vary from person to person, and it's probably in something like seconds or even minutes. It totally depends on the length of the race or the distance, so it could be years, I don't know. We're going to say this is quantitative because perhaps it took me 50 seconds and takes someone else 52 seconds and someone else 30, I don't know. And then for B, we're looking at blood type. 
If somebody asked you, at least here in the U.S., what is your blood type, and you responded with five, they're going to give you a weird look. It's not going to make sense to answer with a number. Remember, numbers should usually make you think quantitative. So this is categorical. So A, B, A, B, O. Absolutely, there's uh, variations on that with the positive and negatives. I wasn't going to write them all here. C, the percent of crop due, uh, lost due to flooding. Well, typically percent will be uh, considered a number. You might be able to argue it the other way. And then at least I remember on my other worksheet, I had this one, zip code. That one's funny, right? Because it's a number. But if you think about it, does it make sense to take an average of people's zip codes? This one is a weird exception because it's numeric, but this one is categorical because every single number just represents a place. Um, you, you wouldn't average those numbers. It doesn't make sense. So zip codes, phone numbers, student ID numbers, ID numbers in general, those are actually weirdly kind of categorical, even though they're numeric. So the structure of a data set, so we want to show you what it would look like. Um, Excel is a really, really popular um, program that people use to store their data sets. We're not going to really worry about storing it, but you should be able to read one. So you can have many variables recorded on a single individual. So the way we like to have it set up, each row corresponds to one individual. So row one is individual one, row two is individual two. And then each column is associated with the variable that was measured. And then one thing that's really common that I want to mention is usually one column, usually the very first column in a data set, it has unique identifiers. It could be people's names. It could be ID numbers, student ID numbers, whatever it is. Uh, these are subject identifiers because they're unique. They uniquely identify the subject. And we aren't really considering them a variable. We're not interested in analyzing uh, student ID numbers. Usually we record these just to make sure we didn't accidentally uh, survey someone more than once. So for example, this um, is an example data set, uh, STAT 201, winter 2014, they were asked uh, some questions at the beginning of their term, very similar to y'all with your syllabus quiz, and they went ahead and they summarized this here. So this row one, this is all student one. Student one has blue eyes, exercise 33 minutes, I forget what the cost is of probably textbooks, 105, 08, and then they said that they were not, they had no party affiliation for like voter registration. So all that row is one person. And you can look here conveniently, which is just one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six individuals that we, that were surveyed here. This is my subject identifier. So subject identifier. Basically what I'm saying is this is what makes sure that I have six unique individuals but I'm not actually interested in analyzing this column. I'm not going to average student ID number. I'm not going to make proportions with it. It's just, it's just there to help me know I have unique members. Then I have eye color, which looking here, blue, blue, green, brown, blue, blue. Wow, that's really um, recessive. Um, so just looking here, they're not numeric. It wouldn't make sense to average them. These are categories. So these, this is a categorical variable. I can look at exercise. I believe this is in minutes. And just looking here, I have 33, 35, 47. These are all numbers. And not only that, they're numbers that would make sense to average. I would, I could take an average exercise time and that would make sense. So this is going to be a quantitative variable. Focusing on cost, 
money most of the time is going to be quantitative, but just to check, it does look like, yes, these are all numeric, and it would make sense to take like, an average cost. So also quant, and then party. There are only so many categories people can pick from. So here it looks like they have the two big ones, uh, no party affiliation and other. Those were their categories, so this will be categorical as well. So here, individuals, variables, and variability. So we have a certain university, there's a rigorous business course, and for some reason, in order to take this course, students have to take an entrance exam uh, prior to it. So in this data set, we have five individuals that took this, this uh, exam. We have their exam score. We have their GPA. We recorded their gender. Note that STATS has this tendency to treat gender and sex as interchangeable. Know that in reality, that may not really reflect um, reality. So, um, well, it doesn't work. Just know a lot of times you see gender, they mean sex. And then year, I think they mean like freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Although that might be a little limiting um, just based on how, how school is done now. So here, all data will have some variability. This means that from individual to individual, these features will change. Individual one comes in, they're not gonna have identical exam score, GPA, uh, sex, and year to all of the rest of the individuals. So they vary from person to person. So the outcome for each individual can be different. And right here, we have described what each of them are here. So I can go ahead, I can take these uh, four variables, because this is a subject identifier. Exam score, let me see, is it gonna, nope. Exam score is quantitative. I look at GPA, it's numeric, and it would make sense to take an average of, so GPA. So then, looking at sex here, categorical, probably the survey they gave only had two options, and then year. So year, it looks like they pretty much had the options of freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. So those are categories. So I would put year in here as well. So distribution. So once you have yourself a data set, uh, you've collected different vari I mean, a set of variables on different individuals, you're going to want to describe a distribution. So you have to define what the heck that even means. So the distribution of a variable tells us what va vari values the variable takes on and how often it takes on those values. So what did we see and how much did we see it? So how can we see it? So that's gonna totally depend on what type of data we're collecting. If you're collecting categorical data, you're going to use certain uh, graphs. If you have quantitative, you're gonna use different types of graphs. So that leads us into data visualization. So we're gonna get into the kinds of graphs we're gonna use at least for 201 uh, when we have uh, a data set.